Hey, what's up guys? Mr. Myas is here and uh, sitting here in my classroom. I was getting ready to, to shoot a video on my uh, on my whiteboard with um, a video camera and I left my video camera at home. So, looks like uh, I'll be doing it here on the computer. And I'll be talking about sampling distributions for sample means. Now, in my previous video, I talked about a sampling distribution of sample proportions. And in my class, we, taught, we went over and did an example of sample proportions. Um, for sampling distributions, and uh, we made the difference. We made the distinction between a sampling distribution and a sample distribution. And um, so I'm not going to go into that too much, but I am going to explain how that this is a little bit different than proportions. Now, sample means we're talking about cat. We're talking about quantitative data now. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to go out and um, let's say that the uh, the purport the population mean. Um, uh, let's say that that I want to know the uh, the level of awesomeness that people are. Um, so I'm going to rate. We're going to have a rating system. We have a rating system of of uh, um, let's rating rating system of one one to a hundred, and one to a hundred is is uh, is my level of awesomeness. Okay, my rating of awesomeness. Uh, one being um, not, not not at all awesome, okay. Um, you're just not awesome. And then uh, 100 is uh, you know the most awesome you can get. You know, um, think of the think of something that you think the most awesome, and that would be 100. Uh, well, it turns out that people uh, people teachers. We're going to talk about teachers. Let's say teachers. These are teachers, um, teachers, and the awesomeness that are teachers. And uh, let's say the average. Um, the average teacher is 62, rating of 62 on the awesome awesome rating. All right, here's an awesome rating of 62, and a standard deviation of 10. Okay, so their standard deviation is is a 10 awesome rating. These are the population parameters, right? The mean of the population is 62 of awesome rating. And the uh, sigma here is 10. Now I'm going to go out and I'm going to take a sample. I'm going to take a sample of 100 teachers. All right, I'm going to take 100 teachers. Um, so my n, my n is 100, and I'm going to go out to 100 teachers and I'm going to find the average awesome rating for those 100 teachers. Now this is a sample, right? This is a sample, and I'm going to find my sample statistic of these teachers, and I'm going to find the average. The average x bar, x bar is my average. This is the average sample average of my 100 teachers. My x bar turns out to be 52. All right, so this time I have an x bar. My x bar is 52. And uh, I'm going to take that sample and I'm going to take this mean and I'm going to plot it on a, you know, on a histogram. All right, so right here, this is my, my, my average of 62 for my population here. And I'm going to have 52, you know, that's going to be, you know, right here, so X bar, right? And then I'm going to um, take another sample of 100 teachers, and I'm going to have another X bar. And then I'm going to take another sample of 100 teachers, and I'm going to have an X bar here. Another sample of 100 teachers, I'm going to have X bar here. So this works the same way as the P hats, only this time we're using X bars instead of P hats. What do you guys think? this dis sampling distribution of sample means turns out to look like. You're right, it turns out to be relatively normal. Now, that is if, of course, there are some conditions that are met that we can, we can say this is going to be a normal model given some conditions. All right, so, uh, so we can't just say, oh, okay, oh, well, this is always going to be normal not always going to be normal because what happens in this sample of 100 teachers if I took x bar to be a uh, 52 and my sample my sample standard deviation was you know like like 5 right um, but what happens if I if I did this histogram here and this histogram was skewed to the right what if my sample was skewed right and then I did another sample and it was skewed left and I did another sample and it was skewed left and then another sample and it was it was uh, symmetric um, those histograms were like that. But if I took just the average and I plotted those averages, how do I know that's going to be normal? Well, it has to pass some conditions. So here are the conditions that it must pass. Uh, for a sampling distribution of sample means, for the normal model to be appropriate, okay, 
we have to pass these conditions. The first condition is the uh, samples need to be taken randomly. You know, and, and I'm going to randomly select my 100 individuals. All right, so that works. The second one is our 10% condition, similar to the P hat. You have to have less than 10% of the population in your sample. Okay, so, um, you know, 100 teachers is definitely less than 10% of all the teachers in the entire, you know, that were entire population. Um, and this is true because I want to make sure that, you know, when if I don't put the teachers back when I select them, you know, without replacement, uh, I'm going to have to, I'm going to make sure that I don't want my sample size to be too large. The last one, which is really important, is that my sample size is large enough. Again, um, this is what I talked about in that last video, but this one's a little bit different. So how do we check to see if the sample size is large enough? Well, there's two ways. One, either the population that I took my sample from was unimodal and symmetric. So if the population of T, if the population here, if the population um, was normal, was a, a unimodal and symmetric population, okay, of teacher awesomeness, then, then I could just automatically assume that my sampling distribution of means is going to be um, also unimodal and symmetric. Uh, if not, or if I don't know that, then I'm going to want my sample size to be large enough, which is about 30. So anything bigger than 30 is going to be large enough to tell us, yeah, in fact, as I keep going on, uh, I'm going to have an approximately normal distribution. And this is true from something called the central limit theorem. And, and we'll get into that a little bit uh, more in class. But uh, basically, you just need to know that, that the sample size, as the sample size gets greater, bigger than 30, uh, our sampling distribution of means is going to get more and more symmetric and more and more into a normal model. So if this happens, then our standard deviation of our normal model, first of all, our mu of our normal model of our x bars is just our population mean. And our standard deviation of our x bars is going to be equal to this little formula, our standard deviation of the population divided by square root of n. All right, so this right here will allow us to create a normal model based on our information. So if we go back here, and we have a mu of 62 for our awesome rating for the teachers and a sigma of, a, of 10, and I took a sample of 100, then my, uh, my mu like this, okay, 62 is my mean, right? Because that's our, our, our mean here. And our sigma of x bar is going to be 10 over the square root of 100, which is going to be 1. So now my sigma of my uh, sampling distribution is going to be 1. So if I was going to draw my normal model, I'd have 62 here. And then my normal model for my sampling distribution is just going to go up by 1 and down by 1. Okay, So this would be my sampling distribution for my norm, uh, my normal model for my sampling distribution of sample means. Okay, so again, it's the same thing as we did before for sample proportions, only this time we're talking about means as our statistic for our sampling distribution. All right, so that's about, that's really all I wanted to go over in this. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit more work and do some problems from this uh, in class, all right? See you later, guys.